maybe some of you have already heard his tutorial about SD Magic. Uh, he'll be talking more about this uh, ways uh, to approach optimization. And we're looking forward to your talk. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> So thanks a lot for the introduction and the applause. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, SD Magic, a package for numerical optimization. And just since we heard two other talks on a very different kind of optimization, so this is not about making code faster, but about finding the maxima and minima of mathematical functions. Um, so imagine, for example, epidemiologists who are calibrating a forecasting model. This happened a lot during COVID or a statistician fitting a curve to data, or an aerospace engineer who is designing a, a new wing for, uh, for an airplane. Now, what all of these have in common is that they have to do nonlinear optimization, so they have to find the minima of functions. Um, but they are also not really trained to do this and are also not very interested in this topic. So they would watch, uh, uh, much rather sh uh, spend some more time thinking about aerodynamics or how to make their model more realistic than uh, reading up on optimizers. So the um, question is, is that a problem? And in theory, it's not really because um, optimi optimization is ought to be uh, simple. So um, you simply import NumPy, uh, you uh, import a minimize function from uh, SciPy, then you code up your objective function, which might be uh, time consuming, but this is actually uh, requires a lot of domain knowledge and not so much knowledge about optimization. Um, then you, give, uh, you create uh, start parameters and you minimize a function. But in practice, it really works a bit differently. So if you um, just do this naively, you very often hit exceptions. For example, uh, if your code is slightly numerically unstable, uh, numerical optimizers are really good at finding parameter values for which your code crashes. And um, unfortunately, this often happens after a long time, and then you sometimes don't get any feedback, so it's very hard to debug these problems. Also, you find yourself writing a lot of boilerplate code. So this is an example from a real project. Um, this comes from the limitation that uh, most optimizer libraries uh, require the parameters you want to optimize over to be a one-dimensional NumPy array or a vector. And then actually at the beginning of your objective function, you first need to take this vector of uh, numbers apart into smaller quantities that you actually need to, uh, in your calculations. Um, if you do this, you very often uh, make mistakes. This is again an example from a real project, and the mistake here is that when they take apart the uh, parameter vector, they assign the parameter number 27 to two different variables, and this is uh, obviously an accident because they don't use uh, number 26 uh, at all. And unfortunately, in that case, it drove a central result of the paper. Um, another problem is that uh, switching packages is really difficult. So uh, sometimes you have maybe tried all of the different optimization algorithms that you find in a package like SciPy, and you're still not very satisfied. Maybe like the results are obviously wrong, and then some colleague comes by and tells you about his great success with an optimizer, but unfortunately that algorithm is in a different package, let's say NLopt. And then um, you don't only have to change the way you, uh, you call optimizers, but uh, your objective function also might need a different interface, so you spend a lot of time transitioning between the packages. And this is basically where uh, SD Magic comes in. Uh, SD Magic grew out of my frustration with some existing tools. Um, uh, we started like uh, three years ago with that. What SD Magic does is it uh, wraps the optimizers from uh, many of the other major optimization libraries in Python. So, for example, we have all algorithms from SciPy, uh, from NLopt, from Toolkit of, uh, for Advanced Optimization, and from PyGmo, but also many others. And it gives all these algorithms a unified interface, and this interface is um, very um, SciPy minimized like, so very similar to what you just saw. Um, we don't just take the common denominator of all of these uh, packages, but we really add some additional functionality to them. And you will see examples of that a bit later. And they are all inspired by the uh, problems that you saw on the previous slides. 
If you wonder about the name uh, as the magic, uh, in, this came from the fact that uh, initially we had a very strong focus on statistical estimation of nonlinear models. So we also have some tools for, um, let's say, getting standard errors for uh, likelihood models. But nowadays, actually, most people use estimagic purely as an optimizer library. Um, so if you want to use it, you can basically uh, start using it like SciPy. Um, let me walk you through this example. So you import estimagic, typically as EM. Then you code up your criterion function. This is, in our case, just a parabola. Um, and um, then um, you can minimize that function by passing it to the uh, em.minimize function. You give it uh, start values, and you select um, some algorithm that should do the actual optimization. And then, um, after this is done, you can look at the uh, optimal parameters or the optimal function values and many more things. Um, one difference to um, SciPy Optimize and most other libraries is that we don't have a default algorithm. If you've been to my uh, tutorial uh, yesterday, I've explained that in a bit more detail, but basically there's no one-size-fits-all uh, approach and the default algorithm can give a false sense of security that you're doing the right thing while you're not. Um, a very central difference um, of uh, estimagic uh, compared to uh, the other libraries is that the params or the start parameters or the parameters you want to optimize over don't have to be a flat NumPy array, but they can be almost anything. So, of course, they can also be NumPy arrays, uh, one-dimensional or higher-dimensional, um, but they can, for example, also be uh, pandas objects. So you can use a pandas series, which is useful if you uh, want to treat your parameters like a vector, but also want to have name-based access to individual elements. They could also be scalars, lists, dictionaries, or name tuples. This is, for example, a name tuple containing um, one floating point number and one um, array. So all of this complex taking the parameter vector apart um, is gone if you use this. And the very important feature that you already see in this name tuple is you can nest all of these as deep as you want. So if you want to have a list of dictionaries of uh, name tuples of NumPy arrays, then you can do that in Estimagic, and um, there's no problem. Um, as I said, we uh, have many optimizers that you can choose from. So there are a few major clusters, for example, SciPy, NLopt, and PyCmo. But then we also have some um, nice algorithms that are often part of individual packages. Uh, for example, the Fides algorithm which is a standalone Python package, but it's a really good algorithm. Um, there are two uh, gradient-free algorithms from the uh, numerical algorithms group, um, and so on. So um, whatever you need, you can basically find it here. Um, Estimagic also provides a lot of diagnostic tools on top of um, the uh, barebone algorithms. So here we have basically the same um, function, but we optimize it in a loop um, with three different al algorithms. So we use the nelder mead algorithm from SciPy, um, the same algorithm from NLopt, and also the Fides algorithm. And um, then we, uh, we simply stick the result um, in a dictionary. And then after the optimization is done, you can pass this dictionary to uh, the criterion plot function from Estimagic, and you actually get a plot of the um, entire history of, uh, of criterion values during the optimization. And I think uh, two things are notable about this. So first of all, um, these uh, three different optimizers are from three different packages. So they have originally a very different interface. But you can not only seamlessly run them uh, together, but you can also look at all the intermediate values. And they are collected in, uh, in the same way. Um, and then you can um, compare how well they work. And uh, the other thing is that um, the green and the orange line here are actually, um, they should be the same optimizers. They're just different op implementations of the same optimizer. But they do behave very differently, and that's um, quite often the case. So it really pays off to have, uh, first of all, a quick way of uh, switching out the optimizers, maybe even the, uh, the a different implementation of the same optimizer, um, and then to compare them visually to see which one is fast. And that way you can run um, an optimization with quite a few optimizers for just uh, a few iterations, um, select the promising ones, and continue. 
Um, we also have uh, algorithms for global optimization. So sometimes your um, objective function uh, looks like this. So you have a lot of different peaks and valleys. And if you just use a local optimizer, then you're going to end up in any one of these uh, valleys, but uh, most likely not in the one that you want, so which would be this uh, global minimum here. Um, so uh, for that, we have uh, 16 genetic algorithms from PyGMO, uh, we have uh, uh, global algorithms from NLopt and from SciPy, and uh, in this area there's uh, a lot more to come in the near future. Another approach to global optimization is a multi-start framework. So um, you can use any of the optimizers that, uh, that you saw in this big word cloud. Um, and simply run them from multiple starting values by setting here multi-start to true. Of course, you can configure a lot of how many optimizations you want to run and when you want to converge and stuff like that. Um, but in the simplest case, it's really as simple as uh, switching on the multi-start to true. And um, then you get uh, multiple optimizations run and uh, of course this is in parallel. Um, you can also uh, visualize the results of that, and then you would, for example, see that, yes, we, we did need a global optimization here because some of these local optimizations only converge to a local minimum. Um, but probably we also did enough because uh, many optimizations uh, come to this, uh, what, what seems to be the global optimum here. Um, there are many other features I don't have time to talk about here. So, for example, if you don't have closed form derivatives uh, for your function, um, we can uh, calculate numerical derivatives uh, in parallel. Um, and uh, you can use as many cores as you, as you have parameters to optimize over. Um, there's also uh, maximize. So, in many libraries, you have to switch the sign of your objective function, then minimize it, and then switch the sign of the result. We do that for you. Um, there's a very simple syntax for bounds and constraints on the parameters. Um, Nonlinear constraints are only, imp uh, only uh, uh, implemented by some optimizers, but by quite many. Um, the optimization as the magic is compatible with uh, JAX, so we just uh, heard about JAX for um, uh, just-in-time compilation, so to make your code faster, but JAX can also calculate uh, derivatives and is really good at that. So in most of my uh, projects I'm working on currently, I'm actually using uh, JAX to get derivatives of the objective function um, and then uh, speed up the uh, optimization. Um, we also have sensible error handling, so if you this is opt-in, but if you um, activate the error handling, you wouldn't get the Linalg error that you saw on the slide for, uh, earlier, but we would catch that Lin Linalg error uh, for you and then use some tricks to guide the optimizer back towards a feasible region, and then it can take over from there again. Um, we also, if you work in statistical applications, um, have uh, algorithms for nonlinear least squares problem, which can be very uh, powerful. Want to give a quick shout out to the team behind As the Magic. So I started As the Magic in 2019, but it would not have been possible without these many uh, contributors. Um, so since the beginning, we have been supported by the University of Bonn, mainly because of Hans Martin von Gaudegger, who was my thesis advisor. Um, since last year, we are also got some support from uh, Stanford University uh, because of uh, Ken Judd, who uh, supports As the Magic. And um, then, of course, I'm uh, also very grateful to all the contributors who helped making uh, as the magic or bringing as, as the magic as far as it uh, is now. And uh, since uh, last year, we are also uh, since beginning of this year, we are also uh, part of NumFocus. Um, what's the roadmap? So first of all, um, we spend a lot of time on making it really easy to um, add new optimizers. So if you have any requests for an optimizer that you had uh, success with or that you just want to try out and compare against uh, our optimizers, um, we can do that. Um, we are also working on custom algorithms in, in some specific areas, mainly for noisy optimization problems. So when your objective function has a very strong noise term and, and the standard optimizers don't work so well. And we are also working on an improved uh, real-time uh, dashboard. Um, lastly, how to contribute. So if any of you wants to contribute, um, contact me anywhere or um, uh, sign up for the uh, Sulip uh, channel. So we do all the communication about the development of the magic on Sulip. Um, you can also open a pull request or issue on our GitHub page. And uh, of course, if you like As the Magic, uh, please leave us a star on GitHub. Um, uh, this also supports the project.
impressive overview of, us, uh, of what thematic can do for you if you're not doing a lot of time for us to judge you. You can optimize it in the room. So uh, imagine I indeed have a non-convex optimization problem, uh, and I'm not familiar with all those solvers. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have this indeed this large range where you can choose out of. What would you then like recommend? So um, you don't know really what to choose there. Is there so does S Magic basically choose that for you the solvers, or how does it look like? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a very good point. Thanks for the question. Um, so we would like, obviously, to get there um, to um, uh, picking solvers automatically based on some problem properties, but this is really difficult. And also many of these uh, solvers um, are optional dependencies of SDMagic, so often the best solvers are non-required dependencies, so we cannot make them a default. Um, yesterday in the tutorial, I tried to boil it down to like six or eight optimizers that I use a lot and gave, uh, try to give you a very um, boiled down version on how to choose optimizers. Um, so I guess this talk will be online. Um, but uh, we also have something on that in the documentation. So it basically boils down to knowing whether it's, is your problem differentiable, do you have some kind of special structure, do you need a gradient-free optimizer and stuff like that. But then, of course, there's always a central component, um, which is uh, trying it out. So you, uh, the theory only gets you to like two, three, four candidates, and then you should really compare them in practice, and we try to make that easy. Does it work with QBI arrays for the parameters, for instance? Um, so I have not tried that out, um, but if you need that, this would be really easy to add. So um, uh, maybe it already works, um, but uh, if not, uh, we could add that easily. Okay, thanks. Time for another question. It, it does work uh, with Jack's arrays, for example. Okay. No further questions. Then uh, let's thank uh, Janusz uh, again and all the speakers of the session. <laughs>